times you as a director just have to learn how to be calm and absorb honestly every genre has been done uh every, every take has been done you know because the only thing different in this entire thing is you and your take acting offer pretty early on first decision of life yes priti i could have been a hero it was really hard it was really hard because couple of months it's like okay where are my friends so like, what happened <laughs> please somebody help me love me here we go to the nerd alert part for the sake of brevity and for the sake of your understanding i have taken the liberty to use a tool uh using steel plates really i don't have a geometry box to make a chart do not laugh please be kind Welcome to Dilem for Films. Everyone has a different metric for success, and for me, actor and now also producer, Richa Chadha is wholesomely successful. She wanted to be an actor since she was four. Not only is she one, but she is lauded for her acting prowess. She delivers and looks really good while doing it. She is well to do, has a wicked cool partner, and no matter what the internal turmoil, she speaks up where she feels the need, despite the consequences. She fought bulimia early on in her career and spoke about it. She fought slotting, body shaming, rejection and the trepidation that comes with unconventional choices but emerged wiser because of them. She recently won a court case for a false allegation levied against her. Richa has broken many of the preset rules a leading lady is expected to follow. She credits her success to this but breaking away from the norms comes with a price. the hardship is something you desire you don't desire or aspire to in an interview she said i'm not looking for a tough ride i want an honest ride if the journey was hard for her she nevertheless marched on but she would have liked to have learned things maybe a little less harshly she's with us today on dial m for films to chat about the last 12 years of breaking the rules richa thank you so much for joining us and making the time thank you thank you so much Richa honestly this is a Richa Chadda appreciation session i just wanted to hang with you <laughs> it's like there is a sane voice out there and i want to say this at the top of the session we are very grateful for your voice thank you that's so nice it is not easy let me just say that it's not easy we know it's really really tough to withstand trolling scrutiny judgment and the establishment coming after you because you just because you have an opinion and your popularity and credibility have enabled that voice uh, and therefore it really really matters that you express yourself you take a stand and i know you always say this that i would have done more if i wasn't in the position that i was in but i just want to tell you that we are very grateful so thank you for doing this thank you you make me sound like a hero oh my god because you are <laughs> i think i think uh, i am taking off from uh, a leaf in your book uh, you've said this many times that it's very important to appreciate and champion and and i think that is one of the things and of course you wrote that beautiful blog uh, because of a tragic incident you lost a friend uh, we lost a good actor and i remember you saying that you know there is a course correction that is required and maybe celebrating people uh is one of the positive things and I, i'm just really glad that dialem gives us the opportunity to really celebrate the artists that we are so proud of uh so richa thank you for joining us thank you. and i want to start i want to dial back right uh, at the top uh richa you were discovered on stage so to speak kanu behel saw you in a play baghdad ka gulam and called you for a screen test for dibaka banerjee's oh lucky lucky oh now you've always wanted to be an actor now yeah. being discovered is serendipity but did you have a plan i i didn't really have a plan i really wanted to just do this and i i was so certain that it would be easy and um i was also really certain that i would end up doing something with it so um 
I mean, I and I was naive enough to think that after my first film, you know, it will just be a cakewalk. Everyone will just call me and they'll be like, "Oh, you know, no need to audition. Just go ahead. You're a star now." But it wasn't like that. I didn't really have a plan. I did try uh, whatever I thought was like the general formula. I thought, okay, I should do auditions. I should do ads. I should do a little bit of print modeling. uh i should do theater and i and didn't really do theater with the intent of uh, uh doing solely theater otherwise i would have stayed in delhi because the delhi theater scene is quite cool um but i didn't want to choose and i i'm really grateful that i got my break uh from stage working with my guru you know that was the last play he directed uh the still that you see is from that and uh adar malik and i were paired opposite each other was playing benazir and he was playing a bachcha or something and you know i go and rescue him uh, it was quite cool in that in yeah there that is uh, another actor yeah that's i think an actor called tarun and that's me um when i've been uh, yeah and some kind of i played this really cool character who could uh who would make her voice deeper and pretend to be a prince and do all the horse riding and the sword fighting but in the end you discover oh she was a woman and she opens her hair it was it's a classical urdu play but it was great fun incidentally 1988 sharukh had done the same play with uh, oh. with bari so i was i really thought it was a lucky play at least for me it was lucky of course it got you your first break Yeah, <laughs> got me my first break in Oi Lucky Lucky Oi. Yes, Sanu actually did the audition with me. Oh. He didn't just shoot it. He he did the audition with me, which is uh, yeah, I love him. I can't wait to collaborate with him again. Uh, I mean, Titli, I can't wait. You know, for what else Sanu Bell can give to the world? He um, is so good. He is. I I still good. have his number saved on my uh, phone as Sanu Johari. <laughs> 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 like uh ha to he johri ko hire ki parakh hai type johri ko bhai dekho he he got you here he got you dolly yeah and love dolly and so did everybody else yeah uh, the film was a super hit but the release was marred by the 2611 terror attacks you know yeah. and we are in that month and exactly 12 years ago the film had come out on the 28 uh, of november yeah um, i there was a you know there was a two year period between oi lucky and gangs of wasipur like when yeah. you started shooting for it you got it i know that you did a lot of theater workshops you also did a short film for vasan bala the vet yeah. with avinash tiwari that was shot yeah. with siddharth diwan yeah uh, so you know th- that was one of the pieces of work uh, apart from the audition that you did for devdi that anurag saw and then it kind of helped him cast you for gangs of wasipur yeah uh, but you know while you were keeping yourself occupied in the pursuit of acting what was the spirit like in terms of navigating the industry understanding the world and wrapping your head around it actually i wasn't certain i wasn't um, that's why i always count my beginning to be gangs because between oi lucky and gangs i was quite disappointed with I, and i was disappointed in like it'll be a bit cocky to say i was almost disdainful i was like oh my god they can't see true talent why why are producers not lining up outside my door to cast me i mean will i even make it as an actor and so then i went back to doing theater i kept doing i did a play with tesco uh, as in the contest and i got uh, i think best uh, i got a best supporting actress nomination or award i can't remember it was so long ago but uh, that was also great fun um we had a theater group called what if so <laughs> so yeah i mean i really enjoyed the period of struggle now when i look back i know that i was working really really hard i was doing every workshop that was happening in bombay i got a chance to work on a play with khalid mohammed and i was so excited because he had made fiza and um actually that's also another thing i was doing this play called kennedy bridge with him where uh, in a span of uh two hours i had to go from being an 18 year old to about a 55 year old wow and it prepped me so well for anurag's film in fact when i met anurag for the first time i asked him is everyone aging or is it just me he said no no everyone's aging but 
somehow women are saying no to dwar i said okay how will i do it and he said but you did it in this play so that's what really um, yeah that's a lot of cg there the <laughs> wrinkles under the eyes and the mehndi hair yes of kafi jaw line give away kar rahe hai you but <laughs> sorry uh, i would love the woman in the back she's kind of like is like not into it at all <laughs> She's like khatam karo bhai kyu <laughs> I know she's like who are these people why are they crying Yeah so I mean I, I so yeah I think that play really helped me and um so in my I had a huge complex about not being able to go to NSD or FTI I I cleared the first round of uh, uh the written exam for FTI to be an actor but fir I went to do um a course at Sophia College which was an SCM course which was like journalism mass media kind of what you are doing everything uh, production and that was the best period of my academic life like i thoroughly enjoyed everything i studied there and i think it's kind of made me who i am uh, i meet a lot of the girls from SCM even today and uh, they are just like they're just cut from a different cloth you don't find that kind of character or talent you know it's not a usual thing uh so when my like acceptance uh, thing came from fti <coughs> excuse me us saal fti mein na strike ho gayi so i thought it's a sign and then in my heart of hearts i was like but i'm really enjoying studying you know should i continue to study will i become a journalist what will i do i had great uh, professors like uh, p sainath and smriti kopekar and so i was kind of in two minds but Yeah I guess when your true calling is something else you end up doing just that yeah You know uh, Richa also <coughs> I I watched your TEDx talk you know and um I want to quote from that um you said that my confidence evaporated when I came to Mumbai that mm. I used to think uh, I was a completely different person I used to feel amazing when I was in Delhi um I was told to uh when you came to bombay i was told to at different points uh of time gain weight lose weight fix my nose get a boob job fix my lips grow my hair keep squatting for a bigger booty pout while talking listen attentively we might have become more mindful now but before but but you know i mean we might have become more mindful than before but body shaming is rampant you know it's not gone anywhere you suffered from bullying as a result of this right how did you pull yourself out of it and what advice do you have for the industry and aspiring actors see i i think it's a lot better today than it was uh, i mean at about 3 4 years ago when the talk came out also you had even people who were writing about fashion you know uh, stop discussing clothes and get really personal about but look at me i look great my god there's no reason for me to feel bad about how i look absolutely everyone can go to hell yes so uh, you know this is what it is i think the just the sheer understanding that so many businesses will stop working the day a woman just wakes up and feels perfectly good and perfectly adequate as she is not just women men everybody you know uh, about the reason why we have a fairness scheme for men is because but 60 65% of the market share for the previous fairness scheme for women men were using the fairness scheme that's why the ad are ladkiyon wali kyun lagate ho whatever so i'm saying i guess it's very systemic um and about 3 4 years ago i really felt uh, like yahan pe sabko na wo perez hilton type ka ek e news type ka that was the format that they were following uh in terms of how celebrities dress and uh, I just found it so ridiculous. After a point, I was just like, "No, hey, it's not okay. You are some middle-aged bald man, unhappy with yourself and your weird kids and your midlife crisis T-shirt. You don't get to talk badly to me about my body." It just comes from a place of access, and different people have different relationships with their bodies and different phases of their life. I know some women who've been happiest when they've been pregnant, when they've been their hugest. And when I came in, I was so I, 
I remember on my first film only so many people joked about like are isko thoda padding de do booty mein padding de do ya uh, bra mein padding de do and i was like but this is this is not a this is not that film this is so called off beat and i i was like who are these ugly men sitting and talking about my 21 year old body and saying it should be like so i think when you come to that point of realization you realize how full of they are i don't know what you are allowed to say on streaming now you can say anything abhi wo lagu nahi hua hai wo online kuch bhi bolo so ha full of tatty <laughs> So yeah I mean I think it just I just growing up man like really so yeah but you know Rita, there are so many people and I know that uh, I I know that it uh, must take a very special muscle to uh, it, to to withstand this because uh, we've seen very beautiful women amazing women Uh, I mean, you went through bulimia. There are people who've gotten plastic surgery done. It's gone horribly wrong, uh, and I can't even—I don't want to name anyone, but I can't even conceive of certain people even attempting uh, surgeries when they look like the way they look like. But there must be something within the system that pressurizes them or convinces them that they have to do it. It's not. I don't think. See, it's not just the system now. Everybody's kind of gotten okay. Um, mm-hmm. people have gotten okay with especially with the platforms everyone you know you get to see people's pores and all it was unheard of before i recently saw a woman with a like small like 4 am shadow 5 pm shadow i was like wow things are changing you know uh, but uh, having said that i think it's not just that it's just that the idea that your your face is going to be blown up that much and everyone's watching it now that that can do things to people Uh, i think it takes a special kind of talent not to be affected yeah um and that's why i think tina fay said it beautifully in her book she was like yeah give me a bit of uh, uh, photoshop yeah instead of me going for actual botox do whatever you need to to sell your magazine cover doesn't matter uh, but yeah i mean and on the other hand i don't even judge it we've had actresses like even jane fonda say that getting a facelift at the right age added 10 years to her career so i don't know if i i would never do anything i don't want to be sanctimonious about it uh, certainly won't look like overnight soaked kishmish for sure but i'm saying agar kabhi ek stage pe jane fonda jaisi confident oscar winning aur matlab legend ko aisa lag sakta hai to kisi ko bhi lag sakta hai and it's just the hd camera and everything it captures you know it does things to people till we come to a place of complete acceptance i think it's very it's going to be very hard and i don't see us getting there anytime soon because now i see like phone cameras have fairness filters built in built in they have like built in photoshop you you can make your eyes bigger your teeth whiter my god you what is it next generation of children are going to be very unhappy yeah yeah that's for sure. already are <laughs> yeah i can assure that's you sure. that they definitely are coming back to you know at some stage like when you've spent 4 or 5 or 6 years in the industry at some stage you realize that this is it that you are the keeper of your own construct you need to figure this out for yourself as to who you want to be uh what do you want to accept what do you want to work on uh what did that look like for you after you'd spent a bunch of years and done a couple of films how did you what are the what what changed in your decision making or how did you start approaching things i think the first realization and it's a very very key realization i would like to tell all the actors who are watching us finding actors or whatever you know don't get slotted in your own head because when i did my first um when i like when gangs was about to release i remember i had a very good well wish of friend who's a writer actor whatever meet me for coffee and tell me are but you know you wear fab india kurtas you should be in in kurtas and ethnic clothes and like doing i was like yeah but I, you know i'm strategically not wearing those things because i want people to know that i am young otherwise they'll cast me as a 40 year old repeatedly not that i have a problem with that but that's not everything i want to do so 
he was from the sort of other side telling me how i should be more acceptable more basically malleable to the art house parallel divakar banerjee anurag kashyap sudhir mishra world he was like there is cognitive dis- dissonance if you wear jeans <laughs> and a zara top i'm like but have you seen me have you met me that's all i'm wearing all day what's your problem and and yet then for the other side it was like oh but uh, she's a real actress you know uh, she's a real like kuch bhi kar do uski muh pe gobar laga do koi fark nahi padta so you know it's it was a very confusing time i was like, who are these people and i know they are indirectly paying me a compliment in refusing to believe that i can be a regular girl in her 20s and wear whatever the hell i want as much makeup and you know glitter nail polish um and uh, just the fact that we are so set in our ways and on either side so one thing we must realize is that it's a malady that affects people ab- across the spectrum if you have somebody who's doing multi star films comedies and the you know whatever the big budget london shootings usme bhi ek set idea hai of how you should look and how you should behave and then on the other side also so you pick so i realize i like a first of all you know i have to pay my bills so i will do what i want whether i do uh, like a film that i'm not so proud of every four years uh, to get a bit richer is nobody's concern and secondly um if i choose to do only events and take only like a pittance as as fee for a film that i really believe in that's also nobody's concern so the challenge is not so much been um like finding work that should have always been busy after gangs or whatever you know for kray and all these films came out the challenge has been to find a team who gets me instead of people being like oh pehle tumhara you know somebody trying to make me uh, vidya bala or not somebody else trying to tell me and like i've got strange things ki aapka jaw ka shape karina kapoor jaisa hai kyunki aap dono punjabi ho so you can try that also you know <laughs> what exactly so you can hear anything from and, and you know everybody as many you know opinions and a holes everyone has one so it's kind of like that so i guess you just have to find your own um, what you need to do your own balance and also not not compete and it's hard i won't say it's easy even well meaning people inadvertently can either put you down or tell you that and then we just have to take everything with a pinch of salt there's a lot of bitter frustrated men and women around in our business so yeah if you turn on someone's film they can be like par tumhari to kahani waise hi khatam hai but i'm like then why are you offering a film to me exactly <laughs> yeah so when all that happens you have to just look like get get over it and be like shut up you know it's a very interesting thing that you brought up in a couple of your interviews where you were speaking about getting slotted Yeah, you said that you know you talk about screen age, yeah. and you said screen age. You know, you said that you know I aged on screen in my some of my roles, like initial roles, and uh, then when you did Fukre, um, and played the wonderful Bodhi Banjavan, uh, the boys were actually all uh, the same age. I mean, Ali is the same age as you, and Pulkit is three years older, right? Mm. and you said at one point of time that the struggle only becomes harder as you go along the beginning is better but with the body of work comes slotting getting put into a box type casting and breaking away in fact you were also slightly upset with mukesh abra when he said the industry needs new actors and you were like maybe you need a new imagination yeah so how did you fight your own slotting like you know eventually one has to fight it themselves because you you know that not only are you slotting yourself you're listening to a little bit of noise around you but how do you break the noise that is around you which is going to eventually lead to projects see the thing is for me it was like i got a lot of scripts right after fukre which were basically it's a goli it could be called doli or goli or whatever but it was the same character sometimes it was a cop uh, and you know instead of delhi they'd set her in haryana sometimes it was somebody who was kind of in punjab so 
in any entertainment i used to keep saying it's uh, only hindi films hindi films but i think like even in the west it tends to happen people get slotted but it's okay a director once told me ki you have to be cast first and then you will be type cast so i don't really take it to heart and um, i think a lot has changed recently because the uh, platforms have given really stiff and very very healthy competition to a very comfortable complacent a big budget entertainment industry and things are really changing and that makes me very happy because it creates space for all kinds of faces all kinds of uh, gender roles all kind of like um, body types age groups you know like jaydeep pehlawar debuted in i don't know see he was in gangs of wasipur he, he was, was sasur <laughs> exactly he was my sasur and i remember when i saw him in that scene and all the female ladies on that film they were like oh my god you know the coal and his hair and the way he's fighting oh my god and it took him so long but he's here and he's fantastic and you know it's it just i think it's um, that's the other thing i want to tell people if you're talented it doesn't matter how long it will take but it will happen you just have to work really hard at it and I, you don't even have to work hard sometimes you just have to work smart you just have to work smart. yeah what do you mean by that richard tell us a little bit about working smart i okay so like like i i don't know so much before maybe not 3 4 years ago but like of the in the last 2 years i'm trying to see i know if i have like an inside edge coming out which is going to be on a platform and it's a big show and you know I, i'm uh, playing a leading part in it i know that it's a serious show and it's it's about scandal cricket corruption blah 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 but i also know that when uh, i when i when fukre will come out maybe um fukre will be shot 6 months from now and you know there are things that i can do to balance it out that's one the second thing is you as young actors today can really control a lot of uh the way the world sees you i mean you can make dance videos on your instagram on reels you can just sing your heart out you can have talents that no one knows about that you nurture for yourself and just the world is so open right now i know it it feels really heavy and repressive in many many places but we have to have hope and um this whole battle about uh the battle of self expression is the essence of it no everything comes down to freedom of expression everything so i would go so far as to say the battle between any kind of authoritarian regime anywhere in the world and democracy is a battle of culture so as artists we are ambassadors of culture so you like you know i have also felt really belligerent so many times but i'm like i'll create art there's so much that a, a song can do to heal the world and there i follow the philosophy of someone of someone like uh, ar rahman who um you know i read an interview of his where he said when i compose a song i think of it like a sunnat like a dua going out into the world that's such a beautiful place to create from and i try to humanize my characters when i play a sex worker in you know uh in um, in love sonia there was a particular scene in which she finds out she has a disease and she's and uh, i really i it was such a i didn't get much time to perform that because we were shooting in real locations and you know i just wanted to be so real and so human about it that if somebody realizes that kisi ko you call somebody a prostitute or a you know in hindi it's a cuss word it's but a cuss. it's a cuss word but there's humanity to it there's also a feeling of helplessness it's like not like you everyone you meet has not opted for this career they've either been trafficked or they've been desperate or they've just been you know on the verge of selling their babies or selling their organs so my whole intent always 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 is to humanize these characters whether it's a whether it's a don 
I try to humanize them because even a don in a lungi and a kurta having scotch and kebabs is having a moment for herself. You're trying to get a window into her own mind and figure out why she is the way she is. Not trying to glorify her in a you know low angle slow motion shot, but just everybody. Just we have to find humanity in all these characters. Richard, do you think it helps? I you you've been in the last two to three years. You've been uh, picking up on a lot of uh, skills. You know, you went to Kazakhstan to learn dance. You yeah. were shooting. You know, um, I know that you want to direct at some stage, and uh, I I just want to understand that does that does having other interest than you know the primary passion that you have. also help in some way uh, to take away the anxiety to to make the ride a little better i think it really does i think every kind of art or every kind of interest nothing goes to waste like uh i i learned a bit of photography was when i was at scm from that i learned how to compose shots you know i it may never be of use to me as an actor because i'm in front of the camera and not behind it but i understand basic composition i'll understand lensing i understand where to stand what to do uh, similarly if i learn how to write dialogues i can maybe make mine better if i understand if i learn music i can play with my voices and i have in my characters you know whether in ram leela or in gangs of asipur um if i know how to uh, if i know how to dance i may never do a film with song and dance or my my roles may not require me to shake my body but i'll understand rhythm and in in comedy everything is about rhythm so anything you learn whether it's maths or painting is going to come in handy i truly believe nothing in life that you learn that you have spent time um uh sort of discovering whether it's reading a book or whatever it is or gardening nothing goes to waste i that's my firm belief and i'm i'm generally a curious person so you know uh, i love learning new things and i i love that about my um, about about my job that it gives me perspective it gives me a position of privilege like i'm always hanging around people but if i'm shooting in a smaller city uh, i'll talk to the person who's sort of my bouncer to find out and you know i'll be like are but यहाँ तो लास्ट वीक रेप हुआ था और आप चार लोग एक लड़की के लिए हैं और उस लड़की का क्या एंड देन देल टेल मी देयर पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू अबाउट देयर अंडरस्टैंडिंग अबाउट व्हाट्स गोइंग ऑन हाउ मच ऑफ पॉलिटिक्स इज इन्वॉल्व इन व्हाट और आई रियली लाइक आई कीप शूटिंग आल्सो आई फील लाइक वन डे मे बी आई मेक अस डॉक्यूमेंट्री अबाउट जस्ट अबाउट लाइफ यू नो जस्ट लाइफ आई लुक फॉरवर्ड टू दैट i yeah. also wanted to bring up uh, the incredible blog uh, that you wrote uh, you know when shushan passed away yeah uh, it was one of those rare pieces amongst the vitriol uh, that we were subjected to that came from a place of honesty and analysis um he was one of your first friends in the industry you both attended workshops together I want to understand, Richard, what happens, and I I don't know whether this question ever got asked during this period where we just heard a lot of shit that was thrown everybody's way. What happens to one's inner world when an artist that you began your journey takes an extreme step? I mean, it's very hard to say what happened to him because that's like literally what the whole world has been thinking for all these. Oh my God! So sorry. sorry. It's okay. <laughs> I'm I'm also moving houses, guys. That's why yes. I'm sangi nee ki hai. This is literally the only place in my house right now which has a place to sit, and this this uh, laptop is actually positioned on a luggage bag. Yes, so, she's she's got boxes all around her house. House. This is the the bed is the only place that she has, and she's doing in the mid doing this mid move. Uh, what I wanted to know, Richa, is what does it do to someone like you? He he was a friend. He was a fellow artist. and you know you work uh, in the industry and when somebody takes an extreme step like that what does it do to you not just to me to a whole lot of us we were really shaken up troubled 
had sleepless nights tried to figure out what the hell you know and uh, see um there are two three things here okay first it's really hard to be an actor i want to tell all actors aspiring actors that it's really hard to be an actor you can do a tough film and then think that oh i have three days i'll move on to the next project or you know um you create those feelings in your body no matter how lazy you are as a performer you got to smile when you got to smile you got to cry when you got to cry even if you use glycerin or a tear stick or whatever those feelings leave a residue in you i feel you know it's not easy to just go from one thing to another i recommend therapy whenever it's needed and i had to take therapy especially after a film like love sonia it was really you know uh, very very hard hitting and very challenging i had to uh, i had a breakdown on the sets of section 375 which released last year uh, which was about a, which had me playing a lawyer defending a a, a victim of rape alleged rape um and it was it was not easy at all you know getting into the skin of those characters and i remember like especially for 375 i reached a point where i had to keep myself it's not easy you know you, you shoot for about 7 8 hours i had to keep my emotions at that stage of boiling kind of rage and then you know something will trigger a memory that oh my god this guy looked at me funny when i was 4 years old and that's just the human mind something will pop up that will either make you reflect or you'll have an epiphany right when you're standing in front of a camera or standing in front of 100 people so uh, those things are not easy because you're playing with your emotions and everything is emotions you know when you're angry or uh, stressed you have palpitations when you're happy you get a good feeling in your tummy so because of that i really recommend that people get people that you know if you want to be an actor or an artist of any kind find someone you can talk to so you can share and be open otherwise it can be a really lonely job that's one and the second thing is uh that it's a it's an like it's a very tough job because you're constantly trying to recreate from reality right you want to be natural you want to be so you have to be thick skinned because people will you know see so you can you can write i like brown bread sandwich and somebody will be offended by that on social media and say something really terrible about your mother or your sister or whatever so you know you have to be really thick skinned about it but at the same time you have to be so vulnerable like a sponge like to 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 keep taking things in from everywhere and sort of juicing that and using that it's a very tricky space to be in so many of my friends i remember i was i um, uh, there was a death in someone's family recently and i remember thinking uh that oh this is how grief this is how really natural honest grief feels like for a second in my mind the actor came on it's a very hard hard sort of uh, space you know it's a difficult way to live i find so i think that um, that's also why i feel like actors should get royalty and actors should get um, you know be paid well because you're losing anonymity and literally um, everything you do is in in public whether it's a marriage or a divorce or or, or childbirth or stretch marks or aging whatever you know you make a trade off and it's not an easy thing i wish that i uh, i i'm so happy because of the masks i go do everything now because i'm always in a mask put a glass on like just put a pair of sunglasses or or, or chashma then you're sorted you can go you will find me cycling around yari road buying groceries well not anymore but i'm saying uh, now in another neighborhood you will find me doing all those things so i wish one could have anonymity and uh, you know be an artist and be an artist yeah. um you know uh, richa in that uh, blog post you also mentioned um subtle sabotage i want to know what that means i also mentioned what sorry subtle sabotage 
subtle sabotage yeah yeah well you you are constantly dealing with egos uh people with huge egos in positions of power when you decline someone's script or um you could decline someone's script for reasons of your own not wanting to be slotted not wanting to be exploited or whatever and they could hold a grudge you could say no to sending somebody a special uh kisi ke nephew ke liye birthday wish bana ke apne time pe nahi bheja that could also pinch somebody so you never know um and i think that uh, this constantly happens i feel like i experienced some bits of sort of sabotage and like bad press immediately after gangs of wasipur because it was such a strong performance such a unexpected choice of um, role for somebody in that age, like in my age group at that point of time that i think it just shocked a lot of people and i um i wish it it hadn't i wish it wasn't uh, um, i mean now everything is much more open but i wish that people would just um <laughs> uh, people would just be uh, open about these things and isn't it better for everybody if there's like a fresh influx of talented new i mean when you when you find good new actors i feel really happy and i celebrate everyone like i'm so excited that vivek gombar and chaitanya tamane and you know tilottama shom and like I, it just makes me feel happy and this really makes me this brings out the deshbhakt in me that india is getting represented in so many ways in so many you know gunit monga when people do well i feel happy and i think that's one of the reasons why i'm like i've never been short of money or work because i don't have that grain where i uh, let envy sit inside me for a long time i'm not saying i'm a saint but <laughs> that is a very essential quality for any any person who wants to grow no. also scam 92 is such an example of uh, good casting yeah. you know so many people came back uh, and and uh, you know they were cast in roles and they came back into our consciousness you know it it's um, like you said that it's such a joy to watch people uh, do something that just surprises you when you've been seeing them do something else completely you know so i agree with you that it's it's a real joy and it's great to see people doing well and uh, maybe championing them and appreciating them and congratulating and uh, you know building a sort of a camaraderie is uh, actually one of the healthiest things to do for your own mind space also yeah so um you know um i also um wanted to ask you because you are somebody who doesn't uh, you know who doesn't shy away from expressing her opinion uh, on a multitude of things whenever you feel the need to speak up um has ha- having an opinion affected you getting work has my career been affected no has 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 your are you getting work because you are vocal about what you feel about different things has that affected the work that has come your way i mean only so far as like the really regressive really terrible scripts they are like I- नहीं वो नहीं करेंगे सामने ही बोल देते हैं एक दूसरे का टाइम नहीं वेस्ट करते सो आई आई या आई थिंक इट्स इन माई लाइफ बट सो फार आई डोंट थिंक दैट आई है लाइक माई करियर बिन अफेक्टेड इन एनी सीरियस वे आई रियली थिंक दैट एंड होप दैट दब्लिशमेंट है richard one last question before i open the house out for questions because there are a lot of people who want to ask you questions i just want to know that uh, what are the things okay. that you most regret um and what would you caution someone about 
um, who is just embarking on this journey. I would tell people to get ready to really give a part of themselves into their filmmaking process, whether it's the like honesty, self awareness is so you know who you are and, uh, and be open. Quote that I have already lost touch with two or three people I used to be. I feel like that every six months. Keeping their own. Richa, we've lost your audio. We've lost your audio. We might have to do the last answer again. Guys, I'm so sorry. I think we've lost Tricha for a bit. She's coming back. She's joining back again. Everyone, please be patient. I hope you're enjoying the session. There she is. Richa, will you say something? Just want to know, just want to see if we can hear. I think we don't have your audio right now. Kalpana, I think uh, Richa is muted. Yeah, uh, no, the host wasn't allowing. Yeah, they could have, but the guest we are now unmute. What is this? Can we hear? Richa, can you say something? I just want to test if we can hear you. I can hear. Can you say something? Yes. I yes, can hear yes. you. Smriti, Perfect. what's happening? So, so I just need to take your last answer again. I said, yeah. what are your biggest regrets and what would you caution somebody about who's just embarking on this journey? My biggest regrets are, I remember even after doing such strong lady roles, I remember that there was a film that I hadn't really agreed to. Like, when I was on day 10 of shooting, I was like, but you know, hey, I, I don't remember saying yes to it, but I didn't say no. And here I'm wearing feathers in, in a swimming pool. So what am I doing with my life? Those kind of things can happen. Okay. Everyone can be a pushover. Sometimes you are afraid to say no to somebody who's an established producer or director. And then you just like, oh my God, my face is stuck there forever. But I... This too shall pass is the wisest, sagest advice I can give to anyone. Um, I, I really don't have any regrets because I've juiced my mistakes. And I, when I feel bad, I mean, you should ask Ali. I cry for days and I sulk and I stay in that depression. When I feel sad about something, when I feel like, oh, I say terrible things about myself, my body, my work. I'm like, I don't know how to act. My career is over. And then I get over it, you know, and then I'm like, oh, khane mein kya <laughs> so, so that that's how life is, like, that's how life ought to be. Um, if anything, 2020 has taught me um, to prioritize my own peace and my own happiness. That's kind of also why, why I wanted to write the blog, because I wanted to caution other actors who are like, let's be papped let's be written about or spoken about or whatever. No one cares if something happens to me, God forbid. I'm sure that someone will uh, leak my last video or my last photograph or, you know, so I really don't have any uh, love for, uh, the, like, literally, the, I can't say it better than ye dunya agar mil bhi jai, toh kya hai? Literally. So I really, I want to, if when you say word of caution or word of advice, I just want to tell people, be happy. You be happy. It doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. It doesn't matter what a stupid casting director tells you. It doesn't matter if they think you are not pretty. It does not matter. Look at their wife. She's not pretty, man. So stop it. He doesn't have good taste. 
doesn't matter what a director thinks of your acting abilities or how much shelf life you've got left it does not matter these people's opinions do not matter and uh, if anything they lose themselves in this chaos in two years you won't know where they are so just like dinosaurs didn't know that they were going to be obsolete and extinct and they just looked up oh meteor and then they were dead <laughs> you know i just feel like a lot of people will not know what hit them and just you should be happy that's it grow your brain cultivate good relationships have genuine honest relationships don't be like iski film hit ho gayi iske ghar jana chahiye don't be like that don't be that guy um, yeah i don't get invited to a terrible amount of parties i can't tell you how happy that makes me i have so many interests i have a kitchen garden i have two pets my lovely boyfriend we have a great time you know and we have our own circle of friends and perhaps we don't invite other people to our parties and it's okay this is not campism this is you picking who you want to hang with and i think energy matters invite people with high vibrations into your life and just stay sorted meditate eat clean work out be happy and have other interests also apart from you know just um uh, and instagram is not an interest and twitter is not an interest those are just things you know it's like have an interest <laughs> do ghanta instagram pe mat dekho diwali videos ha main nahi dekh lo par wo to usko as an actor aapko influencer banna hai to ban jao but as an actor you have to have more than just you know instagram as a hobby <laughs> I'm going to request everyone who is uh, here on the session with us to switch on the videos please. I know everyone's been waiting to. Hi. Hi guys. Uh, can I please request uh Genesia's uh, vid- uh audio to be unmuted please? Unmuted? Yes, hi Genesia. Hi Richa, hi Smriti. Oh, hi. <laughs> hi. Hello, hello. I just come like a stalker just on set. Okay, going to quickly ask you this for a fab session. Everyone's going to say that I yeah. love you. I really do. Um but the thing is that I just have to ask you a question. It kind of you kind of answered it over and over in during the um during the uh, interview, but you know we are all pretty impressed with how real you are and the things that you say okay and it really comes from a good place and an honest place it's a rare thing and you know that you're a part of a very small set of this new generation of actors who don't seem to worry about this taking a political or social stance you are like okay theek hai i'm just going to say what i believe in and you have a very standard very like reliable way of re- responding and you just talked about subtle sabotage and how you have to deal with people's egos with people in power and everything so what you do makes it even more inspiring and commendable and this is a very simplistic question i know it sounds like stupid and simplistic but i want to know like how come you're different richa like you know you have to work i'm not going to name a name right now but you have to work with people who are diametrically opposite to you and how do you balance your value system in this industry you know filled with i really uh, the first thing like i do is i've become very gandhi and over the years in a very true sense not and i don't mean that i don't lose my temper i mean i'll take a long time to become a sage or uh, at least a few decades then maybe i'll become more peaceful in terms of my temper and other things but um in a very 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 spiritual and true sense both light and darkness are the same thing you might be you might be attracted to something and you might think that oh my god you, there we all had a share of fallen heroes in the recent past you know we we've, we've all looked up to people and then they've just shocked you with some response or or and then you understand i think it just comes from a place of understanding i'm not even going to say compassion because there were days i didn't feel very compassionate but i could understand where they they were coming from i could understand insecurity i could understand the greed to get ahead faster which is something that like you know everyone constantly reminds you but itne saal ho gaye the clock is ticking or some such you know they'll find a way to drill that into your head or like each person has a thumb screw you don't know what who's got on who 
you don't know what's going on behind the scenes you know so i feel like um i wouldn't say i've stopped judging people <laughs> because of <laughs> i judge them but it's far more subtle uh, and i think that i can understand what they are thinking often times people personalize an experience and make it about a group of people like if in my career as person a i've been uh, shunted sabotaged by person b all of the category of b people will become my enemies in my head so i need therapy i don't need power i need therapy to be able to i mean god help me why don't we hate the british you know we, as a culture we are still like uh, very much a part of the commonwealth we are talking in english and feeling very happy and looking at uh, you know royal weddings and things like that but the truth is that um it's just that it's people come into a space and they feel oh 10 saal pehle kisi ne mujhe kisi scenario mein hurt kiya tha abuse kiya tha so like you know i'll make it all about that category of people and i'll weaponize my rage and someone okay, will take advantage of it and then i'll before i know it i would have uh, you know ruined everything good about my life and been fully exploited for my ability to pull trps and then just be dumped that's amazing i said a lot no no you you hit and i'm got several nails on several heads thank you <laughs> thank yeah. you chalo <laughs> isko aayega samajh aata hai thank you richa can we request priyanka to be unmuted please hi hi priyanka go for it okay i'm kind of nervous so i think i'll read my own question because <laughs> i'll fumble don't be nervous don't yeah be so my Please question is <laughs> with how hard is it for the film creators to portray a very female character on screen without sexualizing her and why do we filmmakers fail in it why do we fail in sexualizing yeah. no in yeah, not, like, not sex. exactly so no no why do we sexualize them is there a way of not sexualizing a character and just showing her true nature in all forms See, like i don't take examples of ads and stuff just i feel like i i really think of uh, uh, empowered sexuality and sensuality i really like beyonce does it for me there are people in the world who will call her a terrorist and say but i feel like everything about her owning herself and her agency really is empowering to men women you know uh, lgbtq and i i really want that gaze to happen it's slowly happening there's something gentle about when a woman shoots another woman you know even if there's a lot of sex in discussion i recently saw um, dolly kitty and chamakte sitare hai na and there was so much discussion about virginity uh, sex uh, and marriage and what is taboo what's not and desire and, and it was fantastic and i think it's slowly happening it will also happen see both things will happen okay there will be terrible repression there will be people who will become um, spokes persons of culture and morality uh, but the opposite of that kind of uh, uh, thing is only love i really think <coughs> the opposite of love is fear so any any justification for say misogyny or patriarchy or keeping like a, a caste supremacy alive comes from a place of fear that oh status quo will be disturbed so i feel like we honestly if we have to move forth we have to find ways to lessen that fear if we keep attacking people and judging them for their point of view whether it's a male gaze or whatever you know it's uh, sure yeah attack them but there's only so much a twitter trend will achieve 
it's very temporary to in two years people won't remember but if you do something poetic beautiful artistic um it just stays uh what portrait of a lady on fire was so beautiful like it was fascinating to watch it was beautiful and it was so gentle and so thought provoking and so forward it so yeah I, i guess you can fight it with that only those are the weapons we have we are never going to go and pick up arms on anyone that's one of the sad things about being a liberal but then you stay sane and happy <laughs> Thank you thanks Priyanka uh, Richa before i take other questions there is a question on youtube uh, by pratik kumar who wants to know can you please share your experience of auditions any peculiar particular point or experience you would like to share auditions by and large you must remember are a heartbreaking process they are uh, honestly terrible but i feel like something about you if you feel confident and secure and and honest uh says it like if you are well prepared it shows so do your prep learn your lines don't go there flexing your muscles it's not going to help if you want to try different diction dialogue dialect change your hairstyle do whatever but you know when we watch something genuine on screen also it hits you right suddenly you'll be like oh my god why is there a tear in my eye because something in a moment of honesty has happened so identify that and work to that i feel like um that's what's worked for me i i only owe my career to auditions and um yeah i mean Kanu wasn't even a casting director. He was an AD on the film. Vasan Bala was an AD on uh, a film, and Gautam Kishchandani was a casting director. And you know, uh, four years after that audition, I got cancer casting. But so you don't know. I don't think anything ever goes to waste. So just keep auditioning, keep the faith, but but remember to be honest, and also remember to feel confident. You're putting on your, yourself on tape. If you feel under confident, under prepared, it. camera catches everything including uh, hidden sadness in your eyes thank you thank you richa can we request uh, abhishek mahil to be unmuted please abhishek rana hi you know that's our social media guy <laughs> yeah abhishek rana ji <laughs> abhishek go for it uh mera question hai ki uh, बिहाइंड द कैमरा जो फीमेल क्रू मेंबर्स है उनकी क्या इम्पोर्टेंस है स्पेशली डिसीजन मेकिंग पोस्ट के लिए जैसे डायरेक्टर्स हैं प्रोड्यूसर्स हैं डीओपीज हैं साउंड डिजाइनर है आपकी ना आवाज ज्यादा मेरे को थोड़ी तेज बोलोगे हां मेरा क्वेश्चन ये है कि गाइस वन सेकंड आई एम म्यूटिंग माय सेल्फ टू यल एट माय ब्रदर I'm so sorry. Do not laugh. Yeah, Rana ji, I get, I get. Abhishek, go for it. <laughs> sorry. Huh? Movie Mera... houses, everything is echoing, man. <laughs> <laughs> bolo, Abhishek, bolo, please. Khul ke bolo. Kahan tum, Abhishek? Aajao, yar. Sorry, yar. Mera question hai, ma'am, ki behind the camera, jo female crew members hai, unki kya importance hai, especially. डिसीजन मेकिंग पोस्ट के लिए जैसे प्रोड्यूसर हैं डायरेक्टर हैं डीओपीज हैं साउंड डिजाइनर्स हैं एडिटर्स हैं या फिर प्रोडक्शन डिजाइनर है आपकी आपके व्यूज देखो बिल्कुल बहुत इंपॉर्टेंस है यार वो तो रिप्रेजेंटेशन की बात होती है ना अगर मैं आपको एक एग्जांपल देती हूँ जिसको हम लॉकर रूम टॉक बोलते हैं अगर चार लॉन्डे साथ में बैठ के कोई जोक मारे तो चल जाता है उनके उसमें जो वेज नॉन वेज जोक अब सोचो अगर हम एक फिल्म का सीन शूट कर रहे हैं और कोई फीमेल क्रू है ही नहीं जो कि पहले मैं देखती थी आठ साल पहले दस साल पहले शायद हेयर ड्रेसर होती थी उसी को वो ही साड़ी भी ड्रेप कर देती मतलब आप समझ रहे हो ना तो अगर आप एक लव मेकिंग सीन शूट करने जा रहे हो तो अब अब ऐसे इंटमेसी कंसल्टेंट्स आते हैं जो आपको बताते नहीं ऐसे कोरियोग्राफ करना ऐसे किस करना ऐसे टर्न करना बहुत फर्क पड़ता है 
तो अगर अगर फीमेल्स हर डिपार्टमेंट में होंगी ना तो एक थोड़ा सा नेचुरल एटमोस्फियर रहता है क्योंकि सच तो ये कि दुनिया दुनिया भी तो कोएड है ऐसा तो नहीं है कि मेल डोमिनेटेड सोसाइटी होगी पर समाज में सिर्फ आदमी तो नहीं है ना हर जगह आदमी और औरत दोनों है तो मुझे ऐसा लगता है अगर आपको अच्छी फिल्म या अच्छा कुछ बनाना है तो दोनों को साथ में लेके चलना चाहिए फिर भी मैं ये कहूंगी कि अगर जैसे मैं आगे कुछ प्रोड्यूस करने की सोच रही हूँ उसमें मेरी बड़ी तमन्ना है कि मैं सिर्फ ऑल फीमेल कास्ट एंड कास्ट तो नहीं ऑल फीमेल क्रू को रखू जहां तक हो सके क्योंकि मैं चाहती हूँ कि एक ऐसा स्पेस क्रिएट हो जहाँ जो जेंडर की इम्पोर्टेंस है वो ही खत्म हो जाए जहाँ कोई किसी से फ्लेक्स ना करे जहाँ ट्रांसपोर्ट वाला आ, किसी से चिल्ला के बात ना करे जहाँ ग्रिप्स वाला खो जाए ना आप समझ रहे हो ना मैं चाहती नहीं कि जेंडर एग्जिस्ट करे <laughs> तो मैं एज एन एक्सपेरिमेंट जरूर ये करना चाहूंगी क्योंकि मैं कितने सारे सेट्स पे गई हूँ जहाँ शायद सिर्फ मैं अकेली थी जो कि एक लड़की थी और फिर अजीब अजीब बातें जो उनको समझ में नहीं आती कि अरे यहाँ बाथरूम ही नहीं है तो मैं पूछती थी कि क्या आपको क्या लगता है हाँ और औरतों का यूरिन स्किन से वेपरेट हो जाता है या हम पानी नहीं पियेंगे वो सारी चीजें समझना जरूरी है वो तभी होगा ऐसा कोई जान के नींद नहीं होता पर जब तक हम उनके पॉइंट व्यू से इस चीज का आभास नहीं करना हमें खुद एहसास नहीं होगा कि दूसरे दूसरे के दिमाग में शरीर में आत्मा में क्या चल रहा है थैंक यू कैन बी अनम्यूट राधिका छाबरा प्लीज राधिका Done and the plethora of films. I'm sure you have. will. Thank I'm you sure so much. So, and also, like um, th- this is something that uh, it's not a question actually, but uh, yeah, my question is coming up. One other thing is that um, I-, I don't know why this must be really childish, but um, my my I- I'm really scared of what my parents would think. You know, if I do such bold. Um, You're very scared uh, of films. Um, I'm scared of um, um, you know them. telling me not to do it like there the a little dominating <laughs> so it affects my emotions you are so, scared of being dominated or being dominating no i i'm scared of my parents saying don't do that film i want to do whatever i want to i can't you know? hear you she's actually uh, richard uh, she's saying that basically the thing is she wants to do what she wants to do but she is a little scared about her parents uh, you know kind of having a judgment if she went yeah. ahead and did something which is considered bold you know yes considered- because you know we are from a conservative yeah. background well, i'm an engineer so you know uh, all these things come well, i mean i come from a very very regular middle class family uh, in the beginning my parents had apprehensions my mom is a gandhian like you know she's uh, she's actually never used makeup in all her life uh, not even on her wedding day she only wore lipstick so it was very hard for me to explain to her um, what i'm doing why i'm doing but i just had to make her understand that she and i were different that m- my desire for self expression took this form and i really feel like if you are convinced about what you want to do with your life and if you really follow through with conviction i'm not saying it like some hallmark greeting card ka hard work is key to success kind of motto in life but genuinely if you have conviction you will get success and nothing succeeds like success you the same people your relatives extended family neighbors who will be like hmm hmm kya kar rahi hai will come and line up and take selfies with you the trick is not to bother with them at all they don't matter you have to be happy yourself and i i would go so far as to say nobody else matters because if you are not happy then nothing jaan hai to jaan hai boss koi fark hi nahi padta koi aur kya sochta hai um it's going to be challenging because 
deep down in the way we are raised and the way our society is and even us as people the the opinion of our parents really matters what they feel about us we want to make them proud like that's something that's always at the back of my mind um and i i wanted to make them proud but in the beginning i just i think let me just not embarrass them for now and then we'll see and then things got better if your skill set is good if you work on your craft they will feel proud of you you know they will appreciate the artist in you and that's just something that art is it doesn't need language it doesn't need it it's just universal it's a piece of writing a piece of acting piece of music a, a painting whatever you know it cuts through all the barriers so we need we need more artists if the world had more artists we would be in a diff- different space i feel thank you rucha um so thank you for that motivation but now uh, i come to the question that was selected um I uh, that i was going to say you i really want to i love your dimples and can your smile but zor se bolo ah uh, yeah uh, can you hear me can you hear yeah, me yeah i now? can hear you now yeah okay so my question is how do you ask for what you are worth uh, since as women we tend to make do with what we are given did you ever have that shame if yes how did you overcome it you know like in terms of oh my god uh, it's still hard yeah and initially I, i remember at least in a project where there was lots of men and i was just told that this is the budget that's been decided for you and, um no problem and this is how um i think you just have to slowly work your way to it and ask and feel but not i read somewhere uh, decide what your self worth is and then add tax to it so <laughs> i mean be realistic about it i'm not saying in, in the first project that you ever do you'll be charging cross that's not going to happen i this is also something i wrote about in my blog that we all get paid pittance for our first few things because somebody is taking a chance on us it's a very expensive hobby you know acting to take this hobby and make it into a career is very expensive you're acting on someone else's dime someone's giving you great lighting camera costume blah 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 i fully understand but there will come a point where you will be like this is hard work i'm doing hard work and that point should come sooner than later and also a sense that it's not your hobby anymore it's a career so you can't be doing charity and keep doing films for free i have done a few <laughs> but those have just been to almost to preserve relationships or if you know somebody needed somebody was in a spot and you know needed some help thank you can we unmute uh, sheena chauhan please sheena chauhan sounds familiar Hi Sheena go for it Hi 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 Richa that hi. was really hi that was very very inspiring and uh, truly from the heart absolutely loving it so this is my question um what do you want your legacy in cinema to leave behind for the future of women being empowered I I don't I don't think I've ever thought of something as I leave a legacy just for just for women see anything that you do with your whole conviction it will bring your entire identity into it uh, whether whether as a woman or as a um, as an indian woman or if if i go abroad and work in a hollywood film as a woman of color or whatever i mean i think if you back your um, passion up with true authentic authenticity and work it's going to benefit everyone in a way men can be inspired by you also i mean you know it just you just authenticity i think can be inspiring so and that also means that it's okay you be vulnerable you can cry uh, you can feel terribly sometimes some years you just feel like oh my god i'm so bored of this job and you can feel ungrateful that maybe i'm sick of it i need to move on and become a director now whatever it is i just think that the whole journey in life has to be looked at like like the journey there's no we tend to look at it like in our own heads we are writing a screenplay 
this is my break this is my award this is my marriage this is my first success this is when i made my first score you know those kind of things um, they tend to bog us down including an identity like off late i, I feel like abhi mai i don't know what about me gives off the impression that i'm so feisty 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 you know what i mean maybe in a year from now i'll get bored of this world and that's what i think evolution is that that kind of journey because it's a, you know you're an actor it'll be in the public domain i just go for authenticity and <laughs> being really your truest self you know richa i hope uh, like i just say this uh, also because of the fact that you know it is so wonderful like genesia said it's so wonderful to have somebody like you and it's so precious i hope the way you are becomes so normalized that we stop applauding people for having an opinion and being able to express it and being wholesome you know truly wholesome yeah that you speak about this you speak about that you are true to your art you learn more skills you move when something is not working for you and you just don't sit there and stew about it so yeah i think somewhere it is really really important for people to and what you said has hit all the right spots because you're like do you do what works for you if jaake tumhe koi picture karni hai paise kamane kar lo karo na yaar ha i am just don't just be happy man it's only you and your life and if you want to be sad like i remember um, uh, just last month when shoot so like i would shoot from say or wake up from 7 o'clock and uh, sometimes do a night shoot and go to bed at 6 o'clock and my lawyer would call me at 10 am before the hearing so it was all very um and i was in doing an interview with barkha dad where i i broke down and i those are not i wasn't sad but i wasn't afraid to cry you know i wasn't afraid to cry ki oh mera feisty cred damage ho jayega because it's really <laughs> silly to think that uh, people are not you know uh, vulnerable or uh, um, powerless or they're not affected in their personal space or in their personal life something affects you something touches you something moves you you're bound to react so i think that's that's really important again the more you express and the more honest it is the happier you will be and it's all about really all about being happy do not forget that if you want to be an actor you're doing it to be happy so let nothing come in the way of your happiness i've got last four questions i'm going to ask i'm going to tell people to unmute quickly and ask richa because uh, she is mid move i know she's been very generous with her time but i don't want to take advantage of her so uh, can i request riti kumar to be unmuted please hi Hi. Go for it. Hi, Richa. It is so Hi. nice to ask you this question, and it was so lovely a session to, uh, you know, just hear you be so honest about your work. Thank you. So, uh, like, uh, uh, I'm not much of an actor. Writing is my mainstay. So, my question is very basic, but uh, like, uh, like, I think that it would be very interesting from you to know. Don't judge what your I'm question doing? before you've asked it. Oh, I judge everything. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, good. Good it. Yes. So my question was like, what has been, uh, what has been like the most challenging role for you, and what went in the preparation of it? How did you prepare for that character? I think my most challenging, challenging part up until now, I used to think it was Masan. uh but uh last year i did a film called madam chief minister so i think that's been my most challenging part because um from the way i look in that film you know almost unrecognizable to the skills i had to learn for it to uh to the kind of reading i had to do in in order to get an idea of what a, a person in that situation goes through to trying to understand this demon called caste in our in our, in our country which i didn't understand before i didn't understand it because it didn't affect me i am a privileged person you know so just sheer the prep that went into it the execution 
how hard my director made me work it's it's been my toughest part um and i really hope that it uh, you know it does something like it does something i don't mean ke mujhe award chahiye because really after having one of each i can tell you life doesn't change at all but it re- what's nice is that if i can do something to people psyche and humanize that character and make people understand a certain socio economic reality of our lives you know which is outside of this dial m zoom internet you know it will really make me happy if that that little bit of thing hits home and hope you know touches somebody i would have done done my job so i am really looking forward to the release of that eagerly and very nervously because i know that it will you know create a lot of questions people will have a thousand opinions um i might get trolled for how i look and but it's all um really going to be so uh, irrelevant in as compared to the experience of working on that project and what i learned from it and what i've given of myself to it so i'm really looking forward to that <laughs> who are we richa uh, can i request uh, angad bhatia to be um, unmuted please yes hello hi can you see me all right you can see me right yes ma'am ah okay uh ma'am this hi, is one of the hi ma'am how are you i'm good ma'am uh, this is one of the best birthday gift because i admire your work so much and i today got the opportunity to have a conversation with you this is your birthday angad it's your birthday yes happy birthday thank you so much ma'am happy thank you so much ma'am happy birthday to you happy, happy birthday. birthday to you <laughs> Happy birthday dear Bardia Saab. Oh my god. <laughs> Thank you so much ma'am. Thank you so much. Ma'am. It's enough. I can't ask any question now. No, please ask. <laughs> yeah. Uh, ma'am you as an actor you have uh, played many characters Bholi, Nagma, Devi and all. So does each character in some way kind of consume you? I mean like uh, like part of your life belongs to that character? and second part is if you have learned any uh, lesson from your character then do you apply it in your real life as well so a small example with that yeah definitely i um i have oh my cat just entered the room <laughs> sorry if a cat suddenly comes on screen don't feel like anything because they're all scared no there's no chairs in the house uh see i feel like uh, not all characters consume me because only the ones where where it takes a, like you know like a, a bholi punjaban won't consume me she'll entertain me she'll keep me in good spirits and i love playing that character she's high status she's badass she's telling people to do things and she's thoroughly corrupt inside like you know she she she's like agar tune mera loan nahi diya to main teri ek kidney le lungi tere paas to do hai you know so it's just in good humor and it's not um so not every character consumes you but yeah i feel like from the ones that matter of uh, you can take away things from each of those and it it um like the last part that i was ta- talking about um uh, uh it was uh, it taught me so much about our country and how the caste system works in our country um from working in a film like love sonia it taught me so much about how you know something that is a caste word is uh, you know what we call commercial sex workers their reality their everyday life like when you go into a brothel in say kamatipura you will forget about notions of good and bad and heaven and hell because you will realize that this dark dingy uh, uh, badly lit uh, space is that's perhaps what hell actually looks like mm-hmm. you don't have to go too far everything exists on this planet at this time as we are experiencing it as we are going through it so i feel like every character the ones that that come from things like this really teach you something even inside that glamorous well made big series but it taught me so much about uh 
the insecurity of being an actress, which I personally may not feel. Like I personally may be very happy with my female co, you know, co-stars and have a great time. But my characters forever so insecure about like a younger actress or a prettier actress or feeling like, oh my God, she's going to sleep her way to the top. And so when I do the parts and the things that they teach me are very valuable to me in that sense that I feel very, uh, I'm like, oh, hmm, interesting perspective. And that's how I want to, you know, continue to uh, work and find find something. I wouldn't say find something in common with, but like discover something about different. I think it just trying to work on different characters and different from different parts, different classes will eventually make me a better person, I feel. <laughs> Thank you. And happy birthday again, Angad. Happy birthday. Uh, can we unmute Divesh, please? Divesh Mirchandani. Uh, hi, Richa. How are you? Hi. I'm great. How uh, are firstly, you? Firstly, uh, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, in fact, uh, I have to say that, you know, I wouldn't have been an actor had it not been for Gangs of Wasepur. So... It only thankful for that. Um, yeah. Oh, thank you. Now you better act yeah. well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, definitely. <laughs> uh, well, uh, my question is that, you know, as an actor, uh, like, you know, what would be perhaps the mantra? I don't know if that's the right word. The mantra towards, you know, dealing with this, this inner voice that keeps telling you that, you know, you're getting slotted into a particular role or that, you know, you have an image which might be because of something, some previous role that you have done. So how do you deal with, you know, those people, you know, every day they keep telling you, you know, slight hints, little, small, little, you know, lines that they tell you that, oh, you should do something like this, you know, which. I mean, I, consciously, I try not to repeat myself too much. It's not always possible. Something or the other, there'll be a common grain in what is happening across characters. Uh, but as far as possible, like, I think I try not to repeat myself if that was the question, like to keep breaking out of the image and uh, like even in films that I know that are not like going to get huge amount of critic ratings or box office. So like, I feel like I have to do a good job. And I often experiment with things in those parts also, which, um, you know, I just, yeah, I mean, you have to keep breaking your own, uh, your own idea of yourself has to be broken enough times for anything to actually occur. Whether, whether it's somebody else's recommendation of the idea that they have in mind for you, and this could be very hard to do, like your manager, your PR person could be like, but you know, this is a Richard Chadda type of, and then you're like, no, mera koi type nahi hai. you have to, yeah. So yeah, constantly do that. If that was your question, was that your question? Yeah. Okay, last question. Uh, can we unmute Omkar Thakkar, please? Uh, good evening, everyone. And first of all, I would like to thank uh, Dylan with Flames and Smithy Kiran for this opportunity. Uh, my question for Richa is that since now we are working constantly and shootings are hectic. So the first thing comes into the mind of an actor is that let's take a rest first after a hectic day. So how as an actor, do you find time to consume new things? And how as an actor, do you face the fear of burning out? If that thought ever came into your mind. Uh, hi, Omka. Uh, so the question is, how do I find time to learn new things? Consume new content or be in, you know, up to date with the new content and uh, keep yourself from burning out. Um, so, yeah. Just uh, taking the liberty to kind of Could you uh, expand on Omkar's question that basically he just wants to know that how do you time do time management how do you watch new things learn new things uh, also not get burnt out with the kind of work that you're doing because being an actor is also very time consuming exactly 
Yeah, I see it's a time consuming thing and sometimes I have to pick between watching a new series or going out or doing a class online and I invariably will pick doing a class online because I feel like whatever I need to watch I can watch at any point of time. So this whole pressure to binge on something or to like you know to consume content I'm like mujhe consume nahi karna hai mujhe dekhna hai se dekhungi this whole I don't like that uh, we are using the terminology of the people who are making the content you know why should we consume content why should we binge something we i mean I, some things are binge worthy and you know you go after them and finish them all in one go but i try to just do it's not like i never plan i plan i make a detailed to do list and sometimes if i feel like my mind is very scattered which is many mornings then i will make a, like a 9 to 10 am 10 to 11 am 11 to 12 pm time table for myself i wish i had a diary to show but uh i just try to fit in the things that and i try to fit in things that give me joy also whether it's watching something or just relaxing listening to music or doing something really uh, therapeutic like decluttering getting rid of half of my wardrobe which i have done today Oh, feels so good. So I mean, you know, I find time to do those things, and I think that really keeps me happy and grounded, um, and gives me time to also learn new things. That's very important to me. My time. If you don't have time for yourself, then as an actor, you will be in bad space because you will be feel very burnt out, and you must remember it's not easy when you go on a set. कोई मुंह छू रहा होगा उसी टाइम पे कोई बाल छू रहा होगा उसी टाइम पे कोई कपड़ा छू रहा होगा उसी टाइम पे माइक वाला बोलेगा बैटरी चली गई तो कोई पाव छू रहा होगा चेंज करने के लिए उसी टाइम एक एडी आके कुछ बात करेगा और बोलेगा कि ये वाला डायलॉग में ये ये लाइन के बाद तीन डॉट की जगह दो डॉट और एक कॉमन लगेगा और उसी टाइम प्रोड्यूसर आके बोलेगा लोकेशन सिर्फ दो बजे तक है तो रिमेम्बर दैट इज अ वेरी पब्लिक जॉब I have my own competition in this, so I take some time to unwind. Like I don't go to sleep, whether I finish at three a.m. Uh, I don't go to sleep instantly. Uh, you know, whatever time it is, I come back home and I take a bit of what my dad calls transition. Being on a set with so many people and then being solo and doing things alone, and my cats will bring me back to reality in thirty seconds. Oh, आ गई यू नो सो दैट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू मी फाइंडिंग ट्रांजेक्शन टाइम एंड फाइंडिंग टाइम फॉर माई सेल्फ इफ यू डोंट यू लाइक okay uh thanks vicha thank you so much this was such a wonderful session and thank you for giving us time while you're moving it is just wonderful thank we you. had such a good time doing this before we go Swaratmika Mishra, who's a producer in the industry and has been working for a very long time, just wanted to say a few things to you. Can we unmute Swaratmika, please? Hi. Who is Swaratmika? Hi, Richard. Hi. <laughs> we know each other. What a surprise! How are you? I know. I'm good, darling. How are I'm you? I'm so excited. I know. I'm good. I'm fine. I'm all well. In fact, I want to yeah, first, I want to uh, first applaud you. Of course, we've been friends, but I just want to applaud you on a platform like this, guys. That she has gone from a vulnerable character of Masan to Inside Edge, where she is a queen pin and she's like, you know, telling guys, I will tell you the strategy. So I think that itself shows the caliber what she brings to the canvas of the character she chooses. So I think I want to applaud you for one for that. And I wanted to ask you, Richa. Uh, though I, you know, I've seen you work. I've seen you on the set of Three Seventy Five. How hard work you are, and you know what you give to your characters and the nuances and the gestures you bring. But I still want to know because, as again, I'm always curious. How do you prepare for your roles? Like, how do you go about giving that dimension? You know that even when the camera or the lensing is far away, and yet your every action or your nuance speaks. and then you know there's a beat in me either if it's in fukre where i see you as this bully panjaban or i even in the gangs of wasipur you know everything is out of control or in inside edge you know that it's a a, a space where um, everything is out of uh, control 
like you can walk in from one room where you've just made a hard decision but something else is falling apart and then your that needs attention so i'm just saying how do you transition and what do you bring to the table besides the character sketch you given to you i try to do a lot of other work like see there's a way to read a line and then don't you just i mean it's very simple when you meet some when you go walk on the road you can take a look in somebody anybody and the way they are walking talking what they are wearing uh, the way they are scratching their head or the way they are sniffing or the way they sneeze without covering their mouth or whatever it is you know these are very telltale signs of who they are sure so i try to find those signs and i try to keep very crucial things which i think um sometimes scripts mein hota hai sometimes nahi hota hai like socio economic background ke मैं इंग्लिश मीडियम स्कूल में गई थी कि हिंदी मीडियम स्कूल में गई थी करेक्ट uh, मैं uh, मैं अगर लॉयर बनी हूँ तो क्या मैं पब्लिक प्रोसिक्यूटर uh, मैं अच्छे ग्रेड से बनी हूँ कि मैं किसी की सिफारिश से बनी हूँ या मैं कोटे से बनी हूँ या मैं यू नो ऑल दो थिंग्स आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू मी टू फिगर दैट आउट एंड दैट विल रिफ्लेक्ट इन हाउ आई टॉक यू नो वेदर द इंग्लिश हैज पॉलिश और फिनेस और वेदर इट्स मोर इंडियन इंग्लिश वेर where the t's are harder or you know that is what we understand you know without trying to make fun of how somebody speaks you know those things are very crucial to me um and upbringing of the character what kind of a household did she go grow up in was it patriarchal did she have freedom because that character is not me i can't bring my yeah. same stevens education and go approach a character like dolly i have to look at her from new eyes and uh, try to understand what she thinks how she wants to get out of this class you know that's why she wants to marry an nri what you know what i mean so sure. everything i i try to look at everything and usually most of the material is in the script in the choice of words um, in what this is a great meisner exercise aaj aaj this is a great meisner exercise that other characters what they say about you uh, in your absence is something that uh, you know a lot of people i do a lot of my work like that what other that's characters that's... are saying about you in your absence i just met jitin and he uh, really talks highly of you and he says that one thing which i've learned from richa is that uh, how to take care of co actor and she's so in you know instinctive and she's just right there at the Uh, you know at while we are shooting and so he also sends you love yeah you know it's it's team work sometimes i feel like um i feel very intuitively about my co actors and performers and other people technicians and and wo usse wo pata chal jata hai someone yells at somebody on a set or uh, i'm not saying i'm a saint but uh, <laughs> none of us are <laughs> but i'm saying wo ek wo hota hai ki you have to how does a how does a jitin how does he get to be so free and see actors the big the difference between a good actor and an a moderate actor or a great actor and a good actor is the freedom they have in choices most actors will go into a scene thinking main ye expression dunga na to director cut kar dega are cut karne do na usko wo uska cut karna uska kaam hai tumhara kaam hai try karna so and if if people don't have the freedom to try new things no then the scene will fall flat the scenes which have magic often are where people are trying new things are experimenting whether it's with uh, improvising after you know a joke and you know trying to do something new uh, whatever it is you know that's what creates the excitement and for everyone to have that comfort you have to be nice and open and like in any improv theater improv class the first thing that they say is if i say swaratmika and i are uh, on the surface of the moon in astronaut shoes astronaut clothes the first thing you will say is yes please and then you will build from there you will you will first agree to be in the astronaut costume on the surface of the moon and walk funny before you can build on that scene so we can't build on something unless everyone's on the same wavelength and i'm not saying it's easy you find very cocky and uh, self important people also to unke sath i've learned not to be so open because fir mujhe matlab 
I don't want to burn my fingers, but I, you know, um, more often than not, you will find that I'm a good co-actor, and I think this is something that uh, theater has taught me. Thank you, Swaratmika. Rita, thank you so much. I mean, the questions are coming in. I'll send a couple over to you. Uh, I don't want to hold you any longer because I don't think people are going to stop asking. Uh -huh. uh, thank you. Thank you so much for giving us so much time. It's been wonderful. I had such a good time. This is my favorite thing to do, to talk to people and to, because we never get to do it. Apart from an Insta live, which is mostly like nice eyes. Uh, you know, to have an actual intellectual conversation about your craft is so heartening and so joyous. You know, you get to share little secrets and it happens very rarely. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And can I request everyone to just look into their camera for five seconds and just smile. We need to take a master shot. Okay, go for it. Thank you. And I just want to say that next Thursday, Richa ke screen Sasurji. And also Hathira, Jaydeep Elavat is going to be on Dime M for films. Uh, really, really excited about having this conversation, Richa. I'm so glad you agreed. Finally, this this month actually is very special because uh, you know we started off with you, then we speak to Jaydeep, and next week, uh, the week after Jaydeep, we've got Vijay Varma coming on the show. So uh, lots to look forward all, to. All people I'm fans of and please ask them tough questions. Maybe I'll log in and ask a tough question myself. Yay. Uh, lovely, lovely men. Lovely. Lovely. Thank lovely. you so much. It's been amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Rika. See you.